foraging is a great way at this time of year to get a free meal. Now I'm in Hatfield Forest which is in Hertfordshire on the hunt for blackberries that are They're very abundant at this time of year and they freeze well which means you can have a stash to see you all the way through winter. If I were you I would give mushrooms a very wide berth. It's very easy to get them wrong and if you do so it can actually be fatal. What you are safe with though are these guys. This is chestnut tree. Edible chestnuts have very spiny shells and shiny long leaves. Horse chestnuts come in warty shells. They might look delicious, but they are toxic, so do keep them away from little prying hands. Foraging is perfectly legal on public land such as this and on footpaths. Uh, there's also nothing, of course, to stop you foraging in your own backyard, but when it comes to other people's, always check with the owner first. Hello, we're in for a wet and windy one this weekend, so with that in mind, here are your jobs for the weekend. Nip outside and cover outdoor furniture, the barbecue, any tools you have, and the wheelbarrow. Rot and rust is easily avoidable if you take a minute now. Move pots to a sheltered spot. Be conscious not to put them in a wind tunnel between buildings. The same goes for hanging baskets and decorations. Plants are particularly vulnerable to bad weather at this time of year. To protect all that lush, heavy growth from snapping off, make sure they're properly staked and tied in. It's better to prune back any top-heavy plants now rather than deal with the fallout after the wind has snapped it all off. If you are working in the garden, avoid walking on wet soil as it will compact it. Plants rely on air pockets to expand and grow. Whatever you get up to, enjoy your weekend. The town of Roussillon is famous for its red coloured buildings that you can see behind me. Uh, the reason they're red is because of the quarries and uh, the ochre that was quarried from it. Now it's only about 80% sand, 20% ochre and the ochre itself is actually a mixture of white clay. So why aren't these walls white? Well. It's because the kaolinite that is in the clay uh, that was under the ocean hundreds of millions of years ago rises up because of tectonic movements over a huge long period of time. And when that happens it gets baked in the Provencal sun and the iron in the kaolinite starts to oxidise and that is when you start seeing the different colours appear, the reds, the yellows, the oranges. There are over a dozen different types of ochre that have been extracted from the hills of the Luberon.